Okay. Yay. And so if anyone just joining us, I'm Holly Baker Bolzevac. I run the Wise Women Gathering. And this weekend we're talking to a bunch of beautiful presenters um, on our online symposium. And I'm here on Walbunja Ewan land. I've got my little puppy Sigfa who will take up some of my attention today. <laughs> Uh, and I'd like to introduce Deanne. Well, actually, I would like Deanne to introduce herself. So I really, I also really want you to say your last name, Deanne, so I know how to how to say it. <laughs> so tell us who you are and where you are in the world. No problem, Holly. I'm Deanne Apostolou. It's actually very phonetic. If you think of apostles, Apostolou. Um, Cypriot background, the name is, and I'm of um, Greek heritage, similar to um, to Yia. So I loved a lot of the stuff that she was saying and I'm going, she's my celebrity speaker that I'm going to go and sit next to in one of the meal breaks. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> so Excellent. I think she's amazing. Um, yeah, so I'm a uh, traditionally trained medical herbalist. I'm an iridologist. I'm an educator. I'm a speaker. I do a few things. I live herbal medicine, basically. Um, pretty much everything I do is involved with herbal medicine. I write courses. Um, I used to teach. I love teaching. Um, it is a passion of mine and I'm not doing as much of it at the moment because of, you know, everything changed three years ago. So, uh, like, yeah, I'm sort of looking around at, at how I can sort of keep teaching and that. I have written courses and I am still involved in that. I'm marking a lot of the papers that come through from students for um, for certain educational institutions, which is great, but it's not like face-to-face -face teaching. Um, so yeah, that, that's who I am. I was trained by Nancy Evelyn, who you can see her lovely face on screen there. So um, been uh, in the profession now for about 28 years. So um, yeah, it's been, it's been a long time and it, my, my clinic has waxed and waned depending on where I am in my cycle of life. Um, so yeah, it, it was great to be able to sort of work it through with young kids and then back off a bit when I was teaching a lot. And now, you know, I have three adult children and, um, and I have more space to get right into the teaching side of it and the working side of it, the clinic side of it. So. I'm also a founding member of Estuary Learning, who we are grateful that we're one of the sponsors for, um, for Wise Women's. We just, yeah, love to do that because we're aligned with it as well. So, yeah, I'm just all my, my, my life and my, my personal life, my children's life is all about herbal medicine. And as soon as anybody's like complaining of anything, it's like, right, you can take this for that. <laughs> and then don't complain if you don't take it. <laughs> that's it um I just want to circle a little bit back to what you were just saying about estuary so I've done a pre-record with Ned is here with us today as well and we'll be playing that uh sometime over the weekend <laughs> I can't remember which day it is now um but to really you know Nancy and I got really into how aligned Wiseman Gathering and Estuary Learning is and and some of that background and um, history that you have created between you all it's very inspiring so, it's um, lovely. There's actually a few of our members that are presenting at Wise Women's and it's um it's it's nice. It's also lovely that we can all physically connect as yes. well. Oh, you just reminded me. Okay, hang on. Um I have got something that I wanted to show everybody that I found when, in the archives last night when I was looking through. I think actually Monica, you might have taken this photo. I think you might have sent it to me. Um where is it? <sighs> da, da, da. Here we go. I'm going to share this with you all. And you can tell me, maybe it's not an estuary photo, but I'm pretty sure it is uh, from last year. Can you see that? Oh, yes. <laughs> Look at those women. <laughs> Yep. Yep. I loved Tony there. It's just amazing. Yeah. So we've got <laughs> Sally Kingsford Smith. That's you, Deanne, Liz Conlon, Kerry Oaks, Kerry yep. Alexander. Yep. So what's that? Three out of the back row were all presenting this year. We've got Ali Sanchez, Pat Collins. I'm not sure who this person is Joe in the middle. Shields. 
Joe Shields. Joe Shields. Uh, she hasn't been a presenter yet. We're going to have to lay no, some no, effort she on has, her. She's still studying, so she may not want to uh, pretend okay. to be a presenter at the moment. <laughs> sure. And Brenda Rogers and Tony Eaton. So uh, Brenda and Pat up in that front row are also presenting this year. So what a great photo. Do you have a copy of that? Does Esther have I a do. copy? I do. Okay, yes, good. Yeah. I do. Yeah, it's, Excellent. It's, uh, it is. It's great. And, and last night there was another sort of unexpected EL gathering because I was at a, at a company seminar and there are, you know, six members there as well. And it's like, oh, wow, look at this. Quick, let's get a photo. Yeah. So, yeah, we're growing. We've only been incorporated as a not-for-profit organisation, educational organisation for about four years, five years. Hmm. Five years. Thanks, Nan. <laughs> and, um, and, yeah, we're, we're slowly growing. So it's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Uh, and so this is some of the, the, I guess this, like, I don't like to say lineage, I like to say cyclage, you know, <laughs> this is okay. the cyclage that is coming into our Wiseman gathering. Like we've got the Estria learning piece. We also, you know, I did a, a great big chat with Sequoia from School of Shamanic Womancraft and that's that women's mystery thread and like all these intersecting communities that come together. Yeah, so yeah. nice. And and the amount of wisdom that's in each of the women within each of those communities is just compounding, actually. Lovely. So you were an educator last year, as we saw in that wonderful photo. Um, and this will be your second year teaching. Second year, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, so tell us about uh, like what your first impression was being there. And then obviously it was good because you came back. So <laughs> tell us about why you came back. Um. Yeah, but just briefly, I did forget to mention that I'm on a Wabakal land in um, in Lake Macquarie slash Newcastle. So, uh, yeah, beautiful, beautiful area, quite a large area. Um, but the reason why I'm coming back is because the vibe and the connection with everyone at Wise Women's was just wonderful. And yeah, I mentioned as well that, you know, the photo, the look on people's faces in the photos you just leave there so uplifted and you feel so connected and yeah you know people have got your back and you find your tribe and you find your people and it's just beautiful I just love it it was just oh, I got goosebumps now mm. <laughs> while I'm saying that so yeah I'm really looking forward to um to passing on some knowledge and being a conduit you know it's like being an educator not so much teaching you're a, as you just said you're a conduit to healing like in my, in my practice, you're a conduit to the person coming to you. They're telling you their issues that they've got and you're offering suggestions and offering herbal medicines. And so it's, it's the person that is responsible for healing themselves. We're just offering them tools. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I remember someone said to me years ago, it's the plants don't heal us, but they support our internal healing, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Because there's so much more than just taking a few drops of herbs. It's, it's a, you know, like we know, it's a, it's holistic. It's a much bigger picture than that. It's going deep down, you know, questioning what's going on with your body. What lessons do you need to learn, and and all that sort of thing. So, yeah, I guess the, you know, I actually said to my husband this morning, I was like, oh, you know, I'm I'm doing a live interview, so please be quiet. <laughs> But it's like, you know, I get to go tribal. You know, that's the way I, I described it. The bare feet in the grass, the playing of the drum, the singing, the, the ceremonies that you put together are just wonderful. I just mm. absolutely loved it last year. Mm, that's so good. And what you were just saying about that holistic piece and the supporting from the inside kind of makes me think that's another metaphor for community too, right? Like the uh we can we can come together and we can be individuals but there's something that happens in the inside of a community and how that grows that is healing too yeah we yeah. it's a there's some radical acts that happen at this conference because women are doing things that are not not usual in our culture let's just say yeah yeah I mean yeah, coming together right. and not competing and just holding space for each other and yeah that's what I like there's there's no ego it's it's just sharing of knowledge sharing of information um, I, you know, and I will say I'm putting myself out of my comfort zone. You forced me to do that to be on the panel, you know, so that was sort of like, oh, wow, how wonderful. Uh -oh. <laughs> <You know? laughs> 
and that was that's something I want to talk about because I I asked you to be on the walking with shadows panel and that's because your session that you're bringing is around chronic pain and inflammation so we've got your session scheduled for Friday and Saturday uh, in the afternoons and then uh, obviously that fits into the herbal and the plant wisdom kind of stream that we have mm -hmm. But I did feel like there's more there. Like you said, it's a, there's a holistic element to everything that everyone's teaching in reality. No one fits into just one stream. Um, what do you feel like through that lens of the chronic pain and the holisticness, what do you feel like you're going to bring to that panel? Um, I guess looking at the, um, because it's not so much going into treatment um, because that's what I'm sort of going to be looking at in my, in my sessions it's it's going into walking with shadows walking with chronic pain people can't see that you're in chronic pain you know it's you I, I remember a story of somebody that was abused because they had a disability sticker on their car and parked in a disabled car park and she got out of the car and was able to walk and someone was like what are you doing you don't need that why are you mm. taking up that space yet she had chronic fatigue fibromyalgia she was in chronic pain and it was needing to park close to the shops or close to wherever she was going because it was hard for her, but people don't see that. So you're walking with it. You don't necessarily want people to, to see it. You're not putting yourself out there. You don't want people to feel sorry for you, but it's just like, yeah, a little bit of leeway and a little bit of more understanding, I guess. People always, all people have a story. We just don't know it when you're watching someone walking down the street. So approaching them with kindness, you know, and a kind heart is, is really important because you don't know their backstory. You don't know why somebody might be getting upset about a particular thing at a particular moment. Um, and it could be that they're walking with chronic pain. Um, and it happens in a lot of conditions. You know, there's, there's MS, there's fibromyalgia, there's even um, CMV, there's that I can't remember the acronym, but a chronic pain syndrome um, that that just becomes people it comes onto people, and it's all based on inflammation. And it depends where that inflammation is, whether it's in the bones or the joints, um, oh sorry, the bones or the muscles, as to where their pain is and how that you look at at helping them to heal. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's a there's a lot of stuff about that, and chronic pain can lead to fatigue and it can lead to anxiety and it can lead to depression and it, it's like oh you know I'm having a bad day I have to stay in bed all day and then it's like you know it's really difficult especially at the beginning to be able to I guess confront the fact that you can't do what you used to do hmm. and therein with that is grief because it's it's grief about the loss of the life you thought you were going to have yeah. And it's also um, needing to look at how you can help your quality of life. So you don't have too many days in bed. And so you're not dragging yourself around, um, you know, through the day um, to get your work done, whether it's actual physical work, whether you're on your feet, whether you're at a desk, whatever it is, it, it leads to depression, fatigue. You can't think straight. You're exhausted. You can't, you know, get home from work and cook dinner sort of thing. Look after your family. I feel like this kind of stuff, Deanne, is not what you learned at medical herbalist school. This is stuff you learn from your clients, right? I mean, I can yeah. relate to that. That's so much of what I do as a therapist is I'm learning through their experiences and, and putting that into my filter of the world. And so, yeah, I speak to that, like how you learn through the client and not so much, you know, the textbook stuff. Well, I was lucky enough when um, we uh, learning with Nancy through the Newcastle College of Herbal Medicine that it was traditional healing. It's not like the, the schools that are educating herbalists and naturopaths now. So we were able to really delve into the person picture, what sort of person has the disease, not what sort of disease it is that the person has, mm -hmm. uh, which is a concept that came from Hippocrates like hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago, which is quite amazing. Um, and you doing iridology as well, you can sort of look in deeper and, and while iridology, you're sort of looking at the physical structure of any signs and colours in the iris, it also helps you to physically, you're getting closer to the patient and they're feeling mostly 
more comfortable to open up and um, sometimes you've sort of done all the questioning and then you go and sit next to them and you're doing the iridology and then a whole lot of other stuff comes out and I think because you're you're getting closer and you're helping them to open up um, so sort of partly yes through my training that I was lucky enough to have but also absolutely you learn through your patients because you as you as they come to you with issues you're sort of looking up things and studying and you're asking your colleagues and you, you're sort of trying to, you're reading books, you're looking at what's behind the root cause of the disease or the condition that they've got. And things like, um, uh, Inga, I can't remember the name. I was going to say Saliva, but no, she's a friend of mine. <laughs> uh, I've got my book somewhere here. Uh, Inga Sigal, her <laughs> book called um, The Secret Language of Your Body you know, just sort of similar to um, Louise Hay and looking at what the symptom in that particular part of the body indicates and what you can help your body to do, even if it's mantras, um, to help lead you into healing. That whole holistic perspective. I also have that book up just behind me too. Oh, there you go. <laughs> the yeah. other one that I would mention, actually, I've been wanting to ask some of you all in your herbal world about um do you know Annette Noontail's the body is the barometer to the soul there was an Australian book that came out in the 90s it just seems to have disappeared yeah. from people's awareness that to me is the best one of all of those type of books um so I really encourage I people to go and check that author. out did you say Annette Noon Annette Noontail yeah Noontail oh, I'm not no, sure if it's got one L or two okay I can't, my my cover is like doesn't even have a cover anymore it's been so well used that book but yeah she goes into that sort of uh you know your body is your emotions is your thoughts is your you know beliefs kind of thing but this is just yeah. slightly different to Louise Hay and to the one that you just mentioned so if you, if it's even still in print I suggest everyone go and get a copy of that and check what's it out what's the name of the book I'll write it down your body is the barometer to the soul or to your Lovely. soul thank yeah. you yeah yeah, I'm a bit of a bookaholic. Uh, aren't we all? <laughs> you don't go to educational conferences unless you have more books on the shelf that you already have not read. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, just another one to add to the list. That's it. Now, I think uh, I think you've touched on some of this, but I wanted to ask you, and I'm asking a lot of the women, there are pl particularly in the herbal field, I think, there are plenty of people out there who could show up to our conference and teach about, you know, a range of the same topics that, that we that we see presented or that we're having um what do you feel makes what you do different unique special whatever like what's the dn essence that um <laughs> that you show up with yeah um i guess it's just sort of looking deeper and because i've been a practitioner for um for so long it's looking deeper into the person and looking at, at their habits that are keeping them in this condition and it's not to say that you can cure it like you know there's there's not necessarily a cure for MS and you, you're not looking at cures and all that sort of thing but what you're looking at doing is helping people to live the best that they can possibly do with the condition that they happen to have um, and I'm also going to delve into because I think there's there's a lot of fear around pharmaceuticals and medical specialists I'm going to delve into the idea that um, pharmaceuticals are not all evil um, and to be completely avoided. Um, sometimes for your quality of life, you have to go on pharmaceuticals. And so I also look at how to mitigate the side effects from those pharmaceuticals that you might be on, whether it's liver, whether it's kidney, whether it's bone strengthening, um, whether it's just a, a diet full of high antioxidants and things like that. So I'm going to delve into that side of stuff because sometimes you can feel like, and I, I see a lot of people, I don't, I'm a liberal and I don't like, I don't really like extremes. I like balance. <laughs> so I don't see the benefit in going, oh, no, all medicine is bad and all herbal medicine is great. Um, while herbal medicine is, and some medicine, some pharmaceuticals are not great, but you need to be able to find a balance for your quality of life. We are in an age where, technology helps the pharmaceutical industry to sort of um, to more personalize pharmaceuticals and so let's take advantage of that sort of thing and if you really can't cope without that pharmaceutical 
then let's mitigate the side effects. And hopefully that will help to allay any anxieties that you might have around taking some pretty strong medication because for these chronic diseases like MS and transverse myelitis and all that stuff, they're pretty heavy on the body. Mm. So if you need to take them, let's find a way around mitigating the side effects. Mm. It's that support from the inside again thing, isn't it? Like yeah. giving just enough of the herbs that are going to support your body to still do what it needs to do. Yeah, yes, and not counteract too. the pharmaceuticals. You have to be really careful because a lot of people are on pharmaceuticals these days, so you've got to make, have your knowledge of your herbs and know how they clear out of the body so you're not inter- they're not interacting with the pharmaceuticals that they're on. Um, and I was going to say something else that has now just slipped my mind, so never mind, let's keep going. <laughs> It'll come back. <laughs> yeah, it will. yeah, that's really... That's really useful, I think, for people to hear. I mean, I, in my practice as a therapist, I've gone from being like anti antidepressants to, you know, learning through my clients and seeing that sometimes, yeah. like you said, sometimes it's the right thing. And what else can we scaffold, right? Yes. What other what other things can we add to support that? Yeah, it's um, yeah, and antidepressants is a big thing that a lot of people are like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I don't want to go on antidepressants. I remember this one particular lady that every time I would talk to her and she kept ringing me as well and emailing. And and when I was talking to her on the phone, she'd just be in absolute tears. And I was like, look, I think the best thing for you is to go on a low dose antidepressant and we'll support you with everything else, but it's not long-term. It's not forever, you know? So go on it for six months to 12 months while you can build your body up so you can manage the stresses because there were a lot of stresses in her life that was causing all this. And then let's let's slowly wean off it with your doctor. Um, and then we can again mitigate the side effects of the medications. And she was, she actually, like there was maybe two months later, she rang me and she wasn't crying and mm. she was happy. And it's like, oh my goodness, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And her family was really grateful as well because it was sort of it it's. I'm not meaning to make it sound guilty, but it's difficult to live with if somebody is that unwell. It certainly affects anyone else in the household. Hmm. So um, I guess it's also sort of looking at that, how you can balance everything out to help with the patient themselves and with their their partners or their household. Um, And so it's sort of, yeah, three-pronged themselves, the patients and the partners. Well, and that's that piece that I'm sure we're going to mention in various forms throughout the weekend like it takes a village like no one's supposed to do this on their own we need the village of support workers like the doctor and the herbalist and the therapist and we need the people around us to all be able to make it work too so if it means that you know whatever medication or herbs we're taking is going to support other people in the house too to be able to just be in the family and in the community then that's you know, we're, we're looking at that. That's what holistic means, right? Yeah. Looking absolutely. at all those parts. Yeah. Beautiful. Do you specialize um, in any particular areas, Deanne, in your work? Like I'm hearing you speak a lot about the pain and the fatigue kind of stuff. Is that your interest area or are you general? Bit of both. <laughs> There's your liver and answer. Um, <laughs> um, I will look at anything that comes through my door. Like I don't turn people away unless we're not quite getting the results that we want and then I might refer them on or refer them to other practitioners for different things. Um, so I will look at, at all conditions. Um, and, it's, and again, it's like your, my practice sort of goes through, through waves of like um, chronic fatigue, chronic pain, but also a lot of menopause women at, that I'm helping at the moment stress basically in everybody no matter how old they are and even looking at at children as well and the stresses that um that they're finding helping helping them to deal not just kids but adults with any issues like adhd as an example to help them calm and stabilize so they can live the best life that they can live so yeah not so much a specialty but i do have a lot of um women perimenopausal women and menopausal women that are still sort of um, having symptoms that they you know are a bit debilitating or a lot debilitating um that sort of seems to be the biggest thing but anxiety depression stress 
which is really the underlying key to a lot of stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, I would agree to that <laughs> from my professional perspective. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I just had a thought of a new question I was going to throw at you and it flipped out of my mind. <laughs> uh well yeah in terms of like I we're going to get to your gift which I think is great yeah we'll, we'll get to that later but I'm thinking there are going to be people who uh want to see that their herbalist face to face they want you know to find someone local whatever um and like any support team practitioner like it sometimes it takes a while right we've got to shop around for the right one for us so what are your thoughts about if somebody was shopping for their herbalist what kind of questions could they, you know, because I, I assume that everybody is interviewing the practitioners before they go, right? Like when you arrive, you're not telling them your shit straight away. You're interviewing <laughs> them to see if they can meet you where you want them to be. That's what I always encourage my clients to do. Um, so what kind of interview questions do you think is important for someone if they're about to start working with a herbalist? What do they need to know that's going to keep them safe? That's going to know that they're, they're supported in what they need? What are your thoughts around that? That's a really good question. Um, I, I guess a lot of the, the interview, as you say, will happen if I'm talking to them on the phone or if they're sending me an email. And I do send out a pre-appointment um, questionnaire so I can get a basic idea of what their reason is for coming to see me, what they need help with, and then a basic flick of, um, of diet. I'm not a nutritionist, but I do go through um, diet and lifestyle with them because it's holistic. That's really important what they're doing. You know, don't come and get herbs and then tell me you go to McDonald's takeaway three days a week, you know, because it's not going to work. Um, so I, I like to have a little bit of that sort of knowledge behind me. And there might be that, I, I guess you want that connection. So, um, and then they they sort of might ask questions about what you do. A lot of my stuff, my, my point of difference, if people will come to see me because I do iridology. Mm. and and they want to they're really fascinated by that art yeah and so they, there might be a piece there for people to ask like what else what other modalities are you carrying like not just the herbalism that could be a question that people would ask a new practitioner be, yeah yeah which is on my website generally and on all my my stuff anyway so they sort of tend to know that and I get specific emails or I have got a text this morning of someone saying I want a neurodologist um and so, yeah, they're, they're already aware of that. And, and so doing the iridology just gives you another, I'm not a, a testing herbalist. I don't send people off for of pathology labs all the time. I guess that comes from my traditional training. Um, so again, it's, it's sort of finding that balance. I will sort of say, maybe if you had a blood test lately, bring me your results, or maybe you should ask the doctor to test these things, but I won't write the referrals and send them for testing myself I do that through questioning and through urology and through their symptom picture and the person picture so it's um it depends on if people want a real super scientific you know some people are really in their head and they want the scientific basis behind their practitioner I mean, I've done my, my traditional herbal training. I've done a graduate certificate with Jason Horrelake through the University of Tasmania. I've been teaching in the education field of, for herbal medicine. I was teaching for about six years. So I have a lot of different qualifications behind me. So I've found that it's, it's balancing and it's blending the scientific with the traditional. But um, my sister, who's just jumped on there, Christina, She's always says, you know, it's science catching up. So we see all these scientific papers come out and you go, like, let me say as an example, the vagus nerve, which Nancy in class was talking to us about like 20, 30 years ago. And suddenly in the last couple of years, there's all this information about the vagus nerve. And it's like, oh, wow, okay, it's science catching up to sort of prove, I guess, because a lot of, you know, there's a lot of people that are really in their head about the science sort of stuff, that what was known many years ago, and not just through Nancy's teaching, but I've even looked at old NHAA videos where there's been presenters and they've been talking about gut health. And again, we, let's go back to Hippocrates, who talks about your diet and how important food is. And it, it's not new stuff. And, and again, looking at back at what Yia was saying, about the, the Greek background, women were healers because you're on an island, well, 
you're on an island or, or the mainland with your own gardens and your own herbs and things like that. And our grandmother used to come racing to us with chamomile tea, you know, all the time. So it, it's that knowledge that's passed down from generation to generation that science is now proving that it's like, oh, that's why chamomile is so good as an anti-inflammatory and really good for your tummy because it's good for the vagus nerve. And it's great to have the science behind it. Um, but it's also you don't have to have the science behind it if you've had good training. If you've had good training, that's it. Hey, sorry, the, the uh, <laughs> puppy is onto the PowerPoint. Give me one second. <laughs> Changing screens. <laughs> and my puppy is sleeping soundly behind me, <laughs> which is why I have my screensaver on. So I can see there Sarah Cook is actually just in the chat. I'll just take over for a second, Holly. <laughs> Go for Sarah it. Cook yeah. has said all women are healers. So that's another book. So I will write that down again as well. And um, yeah, and look into that because that's another Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Sarah. Sarah is our, uh, you'll all know Sarah. She's our compost lady. She deals with all the compost at conference and helps out in the, the food okay. service area. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's really great. I think I, I love this conversation we're having, Deanne, between between that science, medical, pharmacology kind of space and right across to the traditional wisdom space. And, you know, what we say is Wise Women Gathering is all about making sure that traditional knowledge doesn't disappear. Yeah, we want to share that wisdom. Um, but also, <laughs> hang on a second. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting to the uh, toddler stage where she's getting silly and needs to have another sleep <laughs> um but also also that traditional wisdom part but also like how do we meld what's new and what's old right it's not just when we say we want to share traditional wisdom we don't want to go back into the dark ages or whatever we're working out how how this all fits together that's the modern new way of doing things right um, yeah and it and it is definitely not going right back into the dark ages because they, were, they used to do bloodletting, you know, so they think to help someone feel better, let's get rid of excess blood and people would faint or some people would die. We don't want to go back there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <know>? Definitely not. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and all sorts of, you know, some other traditions, yeah, weren't great, but it reminds me of the um, Maya Angelou quote that says, um, I've got to get this right, do what oh, I'm not do the best one. you can until you know better. And when you know better, do better. That's, That's my it. favorite quote. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I love that. So as new information comes to hand, yes, we might need to let go of some of the old stuff that doesn't work. And we need to, we do better. And then it's not like saying that what I was doing or people were doing is a failure. It's like you're just building on the foundations of, of what, yeah of what others are doing and you're learning it's a, it's a constant learning process so um yes I had great training but I've done so much more learning and you do so much reading and the benefit of estuary learning as well is that we've got a chat and we've got a clinical discussion chat if someone has um, a query about something that they they're struggling with with a patient that they can go who treats this? Can anybody give me any ideas? This is what I've done. And it's just awesome to have these amazing brains sort of come in and go, I use this and I use that and I use the other. So it is, it's blending all of that knowledge together, which is just wonderful. Yeah, and that's community. part of the women's thing as well. And, and you mentioned it before when talking to Year is like, oh my God, who do I go to on the program? You know, I, I haven't made any decisions yet because I want to see so many of everything. Um, so, yeah, it, it's like there are there are lots of teachers, there are lots of educators, there are lots of healers that you will be drawn to. Um, and that's sort of where I'm I'm sort of waiting. I'll have my my program in front of me on all throughout oh, the day. Yeah. Go, where am I going? Oh, I was going to go to that, but I want to go to this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, we know that sometimes things switch at the last minute at conference as well, just depending on what's happening with everyone. So you don't want to be too stuck to that program right now because it might not be the same when you get there. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Anything, anything and everything can happen. Hmm. Ow, 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 ow. 
And so um, that is one of the questions I like asking, particularly for herbal women, I think, like, and, and you probably answered it, but I'll ask anyway, um, where, so if, I, are you going to see more herbal information or do you want all of the streams? And in which case, which is, is kind of the stream that you're most attracted to that's outside of your profession, right? Yeah, I'm definitely attracted to things outside of my profession. Um, I love the body working, um, certain people, you know, and again, I'll sort of go back to, yeah, I'm fangirling here. <laughs> um, I like her sort of things that she's doing. And so I didn't get into any of her things last time. So I sort of want to go to some of that this time. Um, so probably a lot of a lot of the body work, but definitely outside of my profession. And that's not to say that because I know everything, because I don't, but it's because I can be exposed and taking information from all these different modalities that I, I want to experience it all. Yeah. Differently, yeah. different stuff. And I think that's just one of the great things about having those multiple streams, right? There's yeah. there's crossovers and there's growth. And uh, I can't even remember who it was that I was speaking to now because I've done that many pre-records. But um, she was saying that, yeah, she like so much opened up to her in that women's mystery. She was a plant healer. And so like working with suddenly being exposed to all this women's mystery stuff was like, oh, wow, this is a whole area that I didn't even know about. I've done a whole career of this, right? And now there's this other element that actually fits really well. And there's so much crossover. We know people like Kerry Alexander do beautiful work in really combining that women's mysteries with the plant wisdom information in a way that's really sensible and accessible to everyone. You don't have to be a practitioner for it, right? No, that's right. I went to Kerry's um, talk last year. Kerry is a really good friend of mine and um, and I really enjoyed it. And there were some things in there that it was like, oh, wow, I never even thought of that connection and thought of doing things, you, you know, things that way. And she has this beautiful presentation that she put together. Um, and, and like, oh, Kerry, sorry, I can't remember what you called it, but, you know, there's, there's all these sort of beautiful little... Um, Oh, they're not trinkets, they're idols and different crystals and shells and all sorts of things in different areas on, on this beautiful red velvet. Um, cloth. Red velvet cloth, yeah. yes, thank you. And it was, yeah, showing all this sort of different stuff at different stages of women in their menstrual cycle. And there were just some things there that I, was, I hadn't thought of before. You know, yeah. it's like what you see, you don't know what you don't know. Absolutely, yeah. And, and we come... Yeah, like even if we come and we get one great corker piece of information like that, that's worth the whole weekend, right? But then there's all the other things like the community, like the food, like the sharing. Um, so uh, before we finish off, what would you say about the community, Deanne, the Wise Women uh, Gathering community? I love it. It was just beautiful. And like I said at the beginning, it was that whole sense of connection. It was that that final drum circle um and the singing and the, and the celebration of all things wise women. It was just a beautiful connection and I really enjoyed it. And that's why I'm back again this year. And I've looked <laughs> at it in the past and I've never made it in the past. So I was really glad I made it last year. There's something about, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of that, like women watching and thinking, oh, next year, next year. But then when you get there, you always come back. <laughs> like now I'm in, I'm there all the time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, and, and you sort of come home and you go to all your friends. You've got to come next to you. You've got to come next to you. You've got to come next to you. Which I have managed to bring two extra people this year that didn't come last Fabulous. year. Haven't yeah, been that's before. great. So, yeah, that's awesome. Yes, yeah, mine's one of them that sort of on there and oh, she was here. Yeah, coming as well. So yeah, it's going to be a wonderful few days. Absolutely. All right. I appreciate you so much for being here. I'm sure you've got clients and things today, patients and things. Um, we've asked all our educators to leave a gift and we kind of hinted on that before. So tell us about your gift that you're giving to the, the symposium audience. Well, I'm, Deanne. I'm happy to offer anybody that contacts me between now and the end of the, sim, um, the actual gathering, the weekend, 20% um, discount off a consultation. Um, and that's I, like I do Zoom consults because that's one positive that came out of COVID is that we can, yeah, connect. It doesn't have to be face to face. So I do a few Zoom consults these days. Um, and yeah, face to face. Obviously, you can't do iridology. That's the only downside of Zoom. You can't do iridology. 
but you can get a feel for the person, um, but 20% off whether it's a Zoom or a face-to-face -face consultation from now till, uh, well, actually even let's say till the end of May, so. Okay, awesome. I better update that on the thing then. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> until the end of May, that's beautiful. And I mean, you know, everyone's heard how sensible you are as a practitioner, like that <laughs> that space of moderate, like moderate, moderation moderateness you know yeah. like you know there's there's no one way there's many ways and and sort of walking that that beautiful spectrum um so tell everybody where they can find you in the world what are your socials what's your website uh where's your clinic like where are you locally all, all of that yep locally I'm based at the junction in Newcastle um and I have a room that I work with um Susan O'Grady the place is called Remedies so I'm there um, for the clinic. Obviously, Zoom is easy. Um, my website is The Nature of Health. My socials are The Nature of Health, both on Facebook and on Instagram. And um, yeah, that's that's where you can find me. My website has all the details and about what I do and my contact details. So yeah, you can fill out a, a, um, an inquiry form on the website and then get in touch with me. Excellent. And make sure if you do that you tell Deanne that this is where you found her and she'll give you that 20% off if you get your booking in, in time. That's fantastic. Thank you, Deanne. We have Thank so much you. appreciation for you. I can't wait to see you in a few weeks, less than two weeks right now. I know yes. it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's exciting. Um, it's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm going to hit the stop recording. Am I? Stop recording.